Hello all, I uh, hope you're having a great Friday. I hope the weather or um, yeah, the weather in London is nice if you're in London. Uh, I hope you're not having to self-isolate in halls because um, I know some um, people are having to do that at the moment, but I hope wherever you are, you're having a great day. Uh, and thank you so much for uh, coming to this seminar. I'm really excited to deliver it to you today. Um, so yeah, the title of the seminar is uh, Understanding Remote Working. Uh, so we're going to be looking a bit at the, you know, the future of careers in the 21st century and um, what this new form of working means for everybody. Um, so my name is Liam Donoghue. Um, I'll go into a bit about myself in a few slides, but before we do that, I would like to ask who is watching today. Um, so we've all already interacted in the chat. Um, so I'd like to ask you just a few more questions just so I can get an idea of who's watching today and then maybe I can tailor some of the seminar towards you know your needs and requirements uh, so the first thing I'd like to ask is you know what year at uni are you in uh, if you could type one two or three in the comments and let me know what year you're in if you're doing a master's or a PhD let me know that as well um, but if you could do that now uh, that'd be great and I can see uh, so year four fresher year one oh come on, there's more than three of you <laughs> postgrads uh, masters, masters in digital asset and media management, MA masters, just finished second year. Okay, amazing. So yeah, a broad, broad range all the way from freshers up to masters. Uh, really, really cool. And do we know what we're going to do after uni? Uh, y for yes, N for no. Um, have you got any plans? If, if you know what you're going to do, are you pretty certain? Give me a yes, but if not, give me a no. So we've got a no, no. No, yes, but not certain, yes, no. Well, heck, I really wasn't certain either, so I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> um, and the last one, if you do know, or you've got a rough idea, uh, let us know. And if you're a bit uncertain, but uh, you have some interests, let me know as well. So, you know, if you've got a rough idea of what you might be wanting to do, um, then let us know that as well. I'm working at the same time, so probably staying in my current role for a while. Cool. Anyone else? Advertising, marketing, publishing, amazing. Studying global health and social medicine. I want to go to science journalism. Oh, fantastic. Um, consultancy or private equity, business and economics. Okay, amazing. Yeah, I just wanted to get a quick uh, understanding of what, what you're all doing because um, social media advertising, yeah, maybe production. Fantastic, yeah. Uh, the reason I wanted to ask is because obviously remote working does lend itself to certain industries. Um, a lot of the industries you've mentioned here, um, you will be able to do remote working from. Um, and even if your industry isn't one that's very tailored towards remote working, I think in the next few years, it's gonna become such a big part of all of our lives that an understanding of how remote companies operate is still gonna be vital for your success in business in whatever you do. Um, so yeah, that's why I wanted to know that. Uh, so I'll go on and tell you a little bit about me. Oh, there I am, hello. Um, so my name's Liam Donoghue. I am the SEO lead at a startup company called Passion.io. Uh, we are a SaaS company uh, that has built a drag and drop app building platform that lets people monetize their skills online with their own e-learning mobile app. Whew. Uh, that's a bit of a long one, but that's what we do. <laughs> and I live in Manchester, England, um, not New York, which somebody said um, due to the background. And I, I really sort of wish I did right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, just a little bit more about me. So I graduated from Manchester University in 2012 uh, with a degree in archaeology. After that, I spent a few years as a chef before spending three years um, working in fine art auction houses. Uh, so this is the logo of uh, one of the auction houses that worked at called Capes Dunn. And I was a fine art valuer uh, and auctioneer. Uh, so I did that for three years before I thought this, this career isn't really for me. And that's when I moved into digital marketing. My first role was at a company called uh, Venturi Group, uh, which was a IT recruitment agency. And at the start of this year, I moved to uh, Passion, uh, which I just told you about in the previous slide. Um, a little bit about me as well. Um, outside of work, I also moonlight as a 
DJ and I run my own music blog, um, which really helped um, when it came to getting a career in digital marketing because I was already working on some stuff like that anyway. Um, but what I really want you to take away from this slide, if you take nothing else away from any of this talk, is that um, what you do as a degree doesn't have to determine what you do as a career. You know, I started in 2012 with an archaeology degree and I've went through so many different careers until I found one that I liked. It's not, uh, you know, it's not necessary that whatever you do as a degree you need to do for the rest of your life. Because um, I know when I left uni for a while I was sort of like, what am I going to do with an archaeology degree? I don't want to dig in a field <laughs> in the rain in the middle of winter, which was a real prospect at the time. Um, yeah, and I suppose the last thing I'll say about myself is that I love remote working. I think it's the future of work for many, many industries. Um, I think the pandemic, what we're currently facing right now, has really hastened that shift uh, to you know, remote working and distributed teams. Um, and I think for you, you know, getting ahead of that trend now and learning about it now will really set you up uh, well for uh, a career after uni. So have a water. So the next slide, why am I giving you this talk? Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the talk, I think remote working is the future of work. Uh, not just because, um, yeah, not just because companies like it and it's, a ch it's cheaper for them when they don't have to have like physical office space. Um, but I think it's a type of working that empowers us as individuals and lets us actually live normal lives you know where we're not stuck in like a rat race and we're not um you know working just ridiculous hours you know we can do things in around our day we can sort of work more when we want and i think it's a more just like a humane and more grown-up way to work essentially um also i came from an industry that was really technophobic um auctioneering was you know it literally had one foot in the past <laughs> Um, so we were very averse to technology. Um, we didn't, um, you know, we didn't really embrace the 21st century. Uh, so going from that industry, which was very old school, very, uh, I don't want to say the word backwards, but it was a bit backwards into this new digital age. Uh, the transition was so great for me. I think a lot of them insights and experiences I can pass on to you in this talk as well. Uh, and I'm still relatively new to remote working. Um, I've only been doing it for nine months, so um, I think some of the struggles and some of the, the teething pains I had when I started would still be relevant uh, and still offer a lot of insights for you um, if you're going to go for a remote role after uni. And yeah, I did get my slides mixed up quite slightly there. The third reason is, um, as I mentioned earlier in this talk, I think remote working is the future of work. Um, and what I really dislike is this stereotypical image of, you know, the, the, the big power man in the office, you know, men in suits, shaking hands, dog eat dog, climb the corporate ladder, work 18 hour weeks. I think the 21st century, you know, we need to get a grip and find a, a better way of working, essentially. Uh, working that gives us like happier lives. Uh, and I think remote working does give us that balance. So if you know who this is, this is Leonardo DiCaprio from the Wolf of Wall Street playing Jordan Belford, that whole 80s, you know, sort of schmoozy idea of work isn't what I'm about. And I think remote working is a great way for us to break that stereotype and do things we actually enjoy. So what is remote working? You might think that's a bit silly that I'm saying that, uh, as you're all, here at a remote working seminar, surely you already know what it is. Um, but there are lots of different names and definitions for remote working, and they can all get like a little bit confusing. Um, so the short answer for me is, you know, if you're working from home for the majority of the time, you're a remote worker. But for a more, for a more complete answer, um, let's bust some jargon. Um, so the different types of remote worker. You have a sole trader or freelancer, uh, so if you're self-employed and running your own business, uh, so maybe you're doing some graphic design work at home on the side while you're at uni, uh, or maybe you're a copywriter or you're starting a business in your basement, you know, you can be a sole trader or a freelancer. Uh, telecommuting, telecommuter. 
So that's working from home, making use of the internet, email and phone. And that's a definition I just pulled from Google. Distributed teams is the next one. Uh, so that's a group of co-workers who work remotely, either nearby or far away. They may be in the same city, but they can also work internationally. Um, again, that's another definition I've lifted straight from Google. And the other one I wanted to mention, which is a bit of a holy grail for um, remote workers, is a digital nomad. Uh, and the digital nomad is um, the person who basically takes his laptop on holiday with him or her. And they can work from wherever. So you're a very Instagrammable remote worker when you can just take a, a picture of your laptop on the beach and say you're working from Vietnam or Thailand or wherever. Um, so there, there, you know, there are a few sort of different definitions of remote workers. But I wanted to put this slide in here as it's easy to get confused and pernickety about your status, what does it mean? Uh, you know, I'm a telecommuter, I, I don't work in a distributed team, I'm, or I'm a freelancer. Um, and I believe the differences that I've mentioned in the above job descriptions or the above job titles are minimal to non-existent. It doesn't really matter. What really matters is the mindset that you take to, um, to your remote role. And mindset is the biggest difference in a remote world to a more traditional office-based role. So yeah, what is the remote working mindset? So to give you an example, I'll tell you a really, really quick story. Um, and this story is about when I was leaving my first digital marketing job. And um, I'd, I, was, I decided I want to leave. Like I've, had, I've had learned everything that I can from this company. I want to move to a new one. Um, and it took me quite a while to find the job I'm in now. It took me about six months to half a year. But... I was still working at my current job, but although I was working there and I was turning up to work every day, you know, mentally I'd checked out of the office, but because I was turning up every day from nine to half five and I was present, you know, people didn't really question the productivity I had. They were just like, well, Liam's at work. He's in a physical workspace. So he is working, he's at work. Um, and the reason that's important is because Unlike a traditional office environment, when you are a remote worker, you can't just turn up and be present. Um, you are marked on your productivity. Um, so yeah, remote working is different. You know, you're more likely to be output orientated and appraised based on productivity. And so for me, I much prefer this way of work because it, um, it gives you a lot more autonomy to um, approach your roles your, your own way. And it gives you a lot more drive to set your own goals and achieve your own um, targets. And, you know, as opposed to the traditional office environment where I could just turn up, sit around for half a day, you know, it'd still do some work, but I wouldn't be working as, as, sort of, um, as sort of hard because I knew that at the end of the day, um, people would be like, it was at work. So that's a, that's a really important shift to take. You know, you're, you're measured on your output, not on your time in the office. Um, so I, at the start of my week now in my job, I, I'll tell my boss what I'm going to do this week. Uh, this is my list of things to do. And then that's it. I'll, I'll basically be left to do it. And then at the end of the week, um, my boss will say, well, have you done it? Let me see what you've done. So I can't sort of be like, yeah, but I was at work. Because they'll be like, well, if you're at work, you should have done all these things already. So it's just an important thing to use to differentiate the, the, the two ways of working. Oops. Yeah, so also another thing about mindset uh, is be proactive. To be a successful remote worker, you need to own your autonomy. Uh, a good company should train you. So if you're new to the role, you know, you will get some training on like, obviously how, how you're supposed to do things and what you're supposed to do. But you're not always going to have somebody you can tap on the shoulder and be like, what am I supposed to do here? Or can you have a quick look at this? Um, you know, your manager will sit you down a few times a week probably and you can go over big things. But for quite a lot of the day, you might be left on your own. And that's where you need to sort of really proactively think about how you can overcome problems. Um, so that's just another different thing to, to take forward into a remote world because 
you know, you will get some broad training, but, um, you know, maybe after two or three weeks when you're left to your own devices. And as I said before, you just need to get that work done at the end of the week. So you have your like productivity report ready. Um, then you need to really sort of be able to think on your feet at certain times um, and yeah, be able to overcome hurdles on your own. Uh, so yeah, the two things I'd say were be, be proactive and yeah, be proactive. <laughs> Uh, cool. So let's move on to leveraging tech to boost your career. Uh, so how can technology help you find better career support, more peer groups and help get you ahead? Um, you know, technology enables remote working, but there are other tools and communities made possible by technology that you can leverage to get ahead in your career as well. Uh, so what are the tools you'll be using in a remote role? So I'm going to go through a list of tools you, you'll probably be using when you start your first remote role. Uh, and I'll also uh, be listing a few really good communities that you can involve yourself in um, to help you get some peer advice or get some, um, yeah, get some advice on how to, how to approach um, a remote role. So first I'll go through the tools. Uh, so these are all the things that you're probably going to be using when you start your first um, remote role. Oops, there we go. So the first one is Slack. Now, can I get a quick uh, yes or no in the chat? Who has uh, heard of Slack before? Who's using Slack? Are we there? Have we heard of Slack? Yes, yes, nope, nope, nope. Yes, we use Slack and Kuzma. No, 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 no. Okay, so it's a nice, nice mix. I did just notice actually we had some questions in there as well. Um, if you go to the bottom of your screen, there should be a Q&A tab as well. Any questions that come up during the talk, pop them in the Q&A and I can answer them at the end for you. Um, amazing. Okay, uh, so mainly no, 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 no. Slack is... Um, I'd say it's the market leader in um, workplace communication apps for remote working. Uh, it's completely free to use, uh, so you can make yourself uh, an account. But um, the best way to describe Slack is it is WhatsApp for businesses. Um, so you can get a mobile version um, or you can get a conversion that works on a uh, desktop. And it's just a, a string of different channels that um, people in your company will use. So, at Passion.io, we've got like a, a marketing channel and we have a development channel um, and you can just make office workspaces online. Um, and like WhatsApp, you can share pictures, you can share documentation, you can share GIFs. Uh, it's just a really good um, tool to use, um, certainly if you're working as, as a remote company. And if you do go for a remote role, um, it's one thing that you definitely will have to get used to. So uh, have a look at it now. Um, it's really easy to get your head around. Um, if you search slack.com uh, after this webinar, you'll, you'll, you'll get taken to the homepage and they can show you. Um, you can have a look around from there. Uh, so the next one, uh, Zoom. I mean, let's get another, um, who's heard of Zoom? Uh, can I get a yes or no in the chat? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we're all using it right now, aren't we? <laughs> uh, no, never, yeah, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, Zoom, but there's also others. We've got Google Hangouts um, and, you know, there's, there's a myriad of different video conferencing platforms. Um, worth mentioning because it's something you're definitely going to have to get used to as a remote worker uh, doing calls like this. Um, but I think this is probably one we can safely uh, tick off as we're all already on a video conferencing platform. I think. The fact that you all got here to this webinar today shows that um, we can all use that tool. Uh, so next one, Google Drive. Now, I imagine this is something you might not have used prior to lockdown, but um, again, can I get another show in the group chat who's familiar with Google Drive? I imagine, have you been using it a lot more since, since lockdown? Um, yes, definitely. Yeah, uh, so we do all our work on Google Drive. Uh, this presentation you might have seen um, if you have used it previously. Um, yeah, it's essentially, it's Microsoft Word, but in the cloud. So it's a really useful tool for remote teams. Uh, I did this presentation on Google Drive 
the notes I'm actually reading off on the other laptop or on Google Drive. Um, but it's a really good tool because multiple people can work on the same document at the same time. Um, so it's, it's a great way that you can collaborate on content and documentation uh, as opposed to always emailing each other back and forth, pinging, pinging each other um, drafts of like uh, press releases or copy or whatever. Um, so yeah, if you haven't got um, a handle on Google Drive yet, but it looks like most of you have, uh, again, it's a free thing to sign up to. So I'd almost, yeah, I definitely recommend doing your work at uni on Google Drive now just to get uh, really familiar with the platform. I've worked remotely for over 10 years. Google Drive is very useful. Nice one, you've worked more. Well, you should be taking this webinar, not me. <laughs> I've only done it for nine months. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, the next tool, uh, Asana. Who's heard of Asana? Can I see a yes or no again? No, no. Cool. How about, um, yes, no, I use Asana. How about uh, monday.com? You've probably seen the adverts on YouTube for Monday Got Behind, I don't know. No, maybe it's just because I spend all day Googling marketing videos at uh, monday.com comes up. Um, Asana is a project management tool, like monday.com on, there's another one called Trello. Uh, so they're, what they essentially are is they're essentially digital whiteboards um, where all your company can come together and um, it's an online platform which has, a, it's like a big fancy to-do list. Uh, so it's really good for when you're working together in remote teams to keep it on top of projects. So we use Asana at Passion.io, but there's a lot of other, um, yeah, uh, project management tools too. So yeah, Monday.com is another one. Uh, Trello is another one. Um, so I'd advise you that if you're going for remote roles, uh, it would be good to have a look at the different project management platforms. And if you're going for interview, maybe ask, whoever's interviewing you, what project management platform they use, um, because that shows you've done a bit of research into like how a remote company operates. So I'll just move the chat down a bit. Uh, and the last one is Canva, which is a really great tool. Who's heard of Canva? Some of you might be using it, yes. Yeah, I imagine if you're working in digital marketing or you're doing uh, any sort of marketing business-based degree, Canva's probably one you've used before. Uh, anyone not heard of Canva? Heard of it, but haven't used it, no. Okay. Canva is a, heard of it, but haven't used it. Again, Canva's free, again, and it's another great tool to use. Um, it's essentially a online uh, graphic design platform, which is built for people who aren't graphic design experts. Um, so if you want to jazz up a CV ahead of an interview, or if you want to produce some assets really quickly to help you, even at uni, uh, it's a really, really useful tool that's really, really easy to get a, a handle of. It's all drag and drop um, and it's got preloaded assets in there, whether they are pictures or graphics. Uh, again, this, um, this presentation was done on Canva. Uh, well, the images are taken from Canva. Um, so it's a good thing to use as well, even if you're not looking to go into graphic design, uh, but a lot of remote um, companies uh, are on the smaller side, so you might have to wear a few more hats in your role going forward. Uh, so it's a great one to just familiarize yourself with and it's free, so go check it out. Cool, so that's everything for the tools. Uh, next, communities. Uh, you know, what communities can you use online that can really help you get ahead in the remote working space? Um, we mentioned this one before, but I'm gonna mention it again. Slack, uh, is anybody in the, um, in, in the audience, <laughs> is anyone in the um, in the chat uh, in any Slack communities, uh, anything like a digital work, um, digital marketing community or a university community? No. Anybody? Not wider than work team. Yeah, you find that quite often. Um, beyond just um, a platform for people to work together. Uh, in a company, uh, Slack has a, a load uh, of communities that you can join. So if you Google Slack communities for X, so I know I saw someone in the chat earlier was a neuroscientist. So Slack communities for neuroscience, Slack communities for digital marketing. I'm a member of Coding Newbies, Online Geniuses, which is the digital marketing platform. 
we work remotely, which I'll mention uh, shortly, but um, Slack isn't just for um, people who work together. Uh, there is lots of different niche communities in there where you can go in and you can ask for advice, ask for help. Uh, you can even look for jobs on there. Um, so, um, yeah, it's not just a tool for work, um, but have a look at communities which are relevant to what you want to do. Um, and you'll find a lot of advice there for remote workers and you'll find a lot of information there to help you get ahead uh, when it comes to um, looking for a remote role. Mm. Meetup. Meetup is another good one for remote workers. Um, is anyone a member of Meetup? Yeah, 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 yeah. Great, great. You're already all members of all these things. <laughs> um, but yeah, fantastic. It's a fantastic way to uh, meet like-minded people. Um, there are a lot of um, remote working meetups specifically for remote workers. I go to a lot of web, web design meetups and a lot of uh, digital marketing meetups. Obviously, with the current um, pandemic, everything's went online, but you can find um, your webinars and presentations like this um, still on Meetup. So um, definitely something if you're looking for more advice on remote working, um, go and find some stuff on Meetup because it's really, really good. And the last one, which is the trio, we work remotely, remote.co, and the, the big one, LinkedIn. Um, the first two, we work remotely and remote.co are um, remote, working, remote working jobs boards. So they, um, they just post remote only jobs. So um, they're a great place to start your search if you're gonna be looking for a remote role after university. And LinkedIn, LinkedIn is, is uh, surprisingly good uh, for finding a job. Uh, I know I say surprisingly good, but I think in recent years it has turned into a bit of a Facebook for business and there's a lot of, there's a lot of bizarre content on there. It's turned into a bit of a wild west, but I, uh, I, I think, well, I think it's funny and I think it is still a great place to look for, for jobs. Um, but certainly, um, we work remotely, remote co, and there's another one that I haven't mentioned in this slide, Digital Nomad and LinkedIn. So if you are looking um, for a remote role after you've graduated, or even part-time while you're at uni, uh, check out them jobs boards. Cool, I'm just gonna have a sip of water. Yeah, one final point about LinkedIn, um, and, and Meetup and Slack, to be fair. Uh, you know, technology makes the world a very small place. And what I found from experience is that people are more than happy to share their knowledge and give advice when you ask. Um, you'd be surprised how many people will go out of the way to help you on LinkedIn. If you're coming from a place of genuine interest, uh, if you're struggling with something, um, I had an issue with my blog um, recently. Uh, I'll get back to you in a second. Cliff, could you put that in the Q&A, actually? Uh, there'll be a QA and a panel. I'll answer that at the end of the talk. Um, but yeah, people are more than happy to help if you come from a place of genuine interest and you're not just trying to get something out of them. Uh, I've asked for a lot of people, I've asked a lot of, for a lot of help from a lot of people on LinkedIn and in Slack communities and they'll always help you. Um, you'd be surprised how much people really want to help. Um, so yeah, take that uh, on board with you. I'll just compose myself. Cool. Next, so some general job hunting advice. Um, and this is for remote working, but I think this goes a bit beyond remote working as well. Um, always keep learning. Technology and progress are moving so fast now that you can't settle in a career. Uh, you need to stay on top of the latest trends in your industry uh, and always be interested in what people are developing uh, that could, one, make your job easier, or two, change what your role is. Um, you know, with, with the advent of automation and um, ways to automate things, even on, on digital platforms, there are a lot of tools coming out every day that will make your job easier or it could fundamentally change what you do. So... You need to always be researching, always be learning, always attend meetups, always stay active in remote communities. Um, because if you're the person in your company that finds an easier way to do something, whether it's schedule social media posts, write blog articles, 
uh, or you know you discover a new tool for automating uh, a WordPress plugin or something, um, then you become indispensable, and that's really really important. Also, with the second point, make sure job change. It sounds quite uh, dramatic, but uh, I did want to say make your job obsolete. Um, you know, self service checkouts are making people, you know, um, retail workers less less necessary. So there's always things happening in the 21st century that's going to push old jobs out and bring new jobs in. So as a remote worker, but as a worker more broadly, always look at ways that you make yourself indispensable. And the way you can normally do that is by jumping on new trends and jumping on new technologies and adopting them early for your company. Um, that's something I'm always looking out for. What's going to make my job easier or what's going to mean I don't have to do this part of my job anymore. Well, I'll make sure I've got that for the company and then I'll do something else. So you always need to be upskilling, upskilling, upskilling. So if you're a fan of personal development and learning like I am, it's really, really cool because you can always just keep consuming new knowledge. Amazing. Cool. So, yes, and let's get into some remote role interview tips uh, and more specific um, advice for going for a remote role. Ro a remote role. Uh, yeah, spend some time researching the platform uh, you'll be interviewed on. Uh, if your interview is on Zoom and you never used Zoom before, we've all used Zoom before, but maybe it's going to be on another platform we haven't used. Um, you should probably download it and just make sure you know how it works. Um, some platforms can have a few hoops you need to jump through to get them to work. So give yourself at least 48 hours probably and just test the platform before you go ahead and use it. Because um, the last thing you want is to be emailing the head of HR or every company you're going to saying, I can't get, I can't get this to work or I forgot to download it. Um, second bit of advice, wear some trousers. <laughs> Sounds a bit silly, but it can be tempting to do digital interviews in uh, casual clothes. Uh, and when I say casual clothes, I mean sweatpants and a dressing gown. I don't mean a t-shirt like I've got on now, although I am not wearing any trousers. Um, for me, this doesn't get you in the right mindset for an interview if you're, if you're rocking about in a dressing gown. Certainly if it's not a video interview and you're just doing it uh, audio only. Um, you know, I'm not saying turn up in a three-piece suit. Uh, I think that's equally as um, ridiculous. Um, but, you know, wear, just wear clean, presentable clothes. And um, once you've got the job, then you can start turning up to meetings in dressing gowns, which is quite fun. Uh, next thing, I'd say bring a, port a portfolio of work with you. As I mentioned earlier in this seminar, uh, proactivity and being able to work independently are, are highly valued skills for remote work. Um, so you have a portfolio of work you've done, whether that's your own personal blog, maybe a website you've built, maybe a piece of software, uh, or even like an event. Um, so if you're like a, a fashion design graduate and you put on like a fashion show um something where you've worked independently and proactively towards a goal um that's really important because uh, remote companies won't be able to offer you as much one-on-one uh, -on -one time um when you get going so any evidence that you've worked to your own initiative is really really good um going back to what i said at, at the start when i was introducing myself the um the music blog I put together and I'm still working on was, was a real bonus for me going for jobs because I built something on my own with no sort of um, pressure or direction from anyone. So something like that will, will really, really help. Um, bring questions to the interview. And I think this, this interview tips as old as time. <laughs> um, but I think out of all the tips I'm going to give you in this section, this one is the most important. Uh, research the company you're applying for. Uh, try to figure out how they operate and ask some questions about that. Um, specifically, like if you're going for a, like a role as a social media manager, I always like to ask why they picked your CV out of the shortlist to interview. So then you can sort of get them to sell you to themselves, which is a really good, really good um, tactic. Ask what training you'll get, what projects you'll be working on. Um, I think another thing about the 21st century is we're not going to stay in jobs forever. 
we can move every two years and that's fine. So it's probably more important for you to ask what projects you're going to be working on that will help build your CV. Um, what the culture's like, culture is really important for remote work. Um, at Passion.io, we have a meeting every Friday, which is just like a, a weekly catch up with everyone on the team. But culture is quite difficult and it's something that's important because you can feel quite isolated as a remote worker if you're not careful. We play games quite regularly. We have a little game called Hacksball, uh, which is just like a little football game. Um, but how a remote company builds culture and makes you feel part of a company and not just somebody working at a desk is quite important. So that's a good, good thing to ask. Um, and ask why you think you'd be good for the role. Um, again, another way of sort of selling um, your, well, getting them to sell you to them. I'm not sure which way that is, but yeah, ask why, you, why they think you'd be good at the role. Um, but yeah, all questions about um, what uh, industry specific tech. Um, so I'll ask, you know, what, what digital marketing tools are you using? Why are you using them? I've used this in the past. Maybe you should consider using that. Um, so ask things like very specific to your role as well. Um, so if you do some research prior to the interview about um, sort of industry specific, specific tools, see what they're using and why they're using them. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't immediately say recommend other ones, but um, just, uh, um, yeah, it's good to know what they're using. And as I've already said in this seminar, um, the day of the one company uh, for life worker is over. Uh, you have power and flexibility. And I think going into an interview, ask questions, but remember that as well. Like, this isn't the job you're going to have for the rest of your life. You don't need to beg and scrape to get it. You can, you can go somewhere else or you can choose something else. Um, so you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. Um, and if you don't click with an interviewer, go somewhere else, you know. Um, and I think if the alarm bells start ringing, then don't feel like you have to take that job because you need a job. Um, always, always be, take a step back and be like, is this company right for me? Um, you know, for me, I've got a personal alarm, which is any, if any company says we've got to work hard, play hard culture, I'm out the door because that to me means you'll work 14 hours a day and then you'll have to go to Vodka Revs on the weekend with uh, the boys and I don't want to do that. <laughs> That's not what I want. So uh, yeah, just, just think about what you want from the interview and remember that you're looking at them as much as they're looking at you. Uh, and the last one. Get relevant experience now. Um, I know we have some people in freshers, we have some people in second year, we had some master's students as well. Um, what I'd say is remote work, um, they like to see proactivity and they like to see you working independently. Um, but I also think that with the pandemic happening right now, there's gonna be a lot more competition for remote roles. A lot more places are gonna go remote as well. Um, so if you have time in summer, look for internships, look for work experience, um, and make sure it's relevant to whatever you want to do. Obviously don't, you know, don't go and work for a PR firm if you want to end up doing HR. <laughs> relevant experience is, is super important. Um, and even you can use tools, uh, some of you might be using them already, uh, Fiverr for freelance work, um, Upwork as well. So if you have any graphic designers or copywriters, uh, sorry, I keep going back to them um, examples. It's just that's the industry I work in, so they come more naturally to me. Um, but yeah, look for relevant industry experience now because that that um, proactivity will stand you in good stead going forward. And that is about everything. So thank you. Uh, I honestly believe that remote working is going to going to become a very big part of all our lives. Uh, companies like Facebook and Twitter have now went 100% remote. Um, so, you know, when we've got big companies like that shifting to fully remote offices, I, you know, I believe that this is going to be a, a change in our working life that's going to be here forever. Um, and I think, you know, this trend has been happening very steadily, but again, with the, the pandemic happening right now, that's hastened this move. So, you know, not all jobs are going to be able to do remotely. Uh, doctors, builders, 
archaeologists like me, uh, unless they didn't change career, uh, they'll still need to have to go to a physical site to work. Uh, but even if your chosen profession makes remote working difficult, uh, I think it's important that you understand the rules of remote working and the impact it could have on our society as a, as, as a whole, because um, I think it will change our way of life massively. For me personally, uh, as I've already said in this seminar, the freedom and autonomy it gives you uh, and gives me and my job and personal life is really empowering. Um, so if you're on the fence about remote working, I will say that it might not be for everyone, uh, but try it and, and see and see if it's for you. Because um, I mean, what other type of working uh, can you wear a dressing gown in the middle of the day? Cool. Thank you. Uh, that is everything. As you can see, my email is there and my LinkedIn is there. Um, so please email me any questions. Um, if you've got any or if you need any sort of more advice on remote working, uh, I'm more than happy to help. Also, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. And now I think we have a quarter of an hour left for some questions and we've got five in the Q&A. Um, before I go into the Q&A, can I just get a quick show in the um, chat? Was that, did everyone get a lot of value from that? Did we get some value from that? Um, can we have a yes, no, or some? <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, great. Okay, amazing. Okay, I can't open my Q&A tab. I'm going to stop the share. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so... Did Facebook and Twitter go permanent remote? It was Facebook and Twitter, or it was definitely Facebook there. I don't have the article to hand, but yeah, they've moved completely remote, um, which is really, really powerful for uh, remote workers because it really opens up the door for us to work in a lot more companies. Um, I, I wrote an article for KCL not too long ago about, about how um, remote working is helping um, helping um, increase accessibility for people. You know, you no longer have to go to San Francisco to work for Facebook now. You can work for Facebook for wherever, from wherever. Um, and it really helps like, level the playing field and means that you don't have to like up sticks and change your life to go and work somewhere. Um, so it's, re it's really good uh, that more places and more big sort of like these big um, companies like Google and Facebook are letting people work from wherever. Um, so it means you get a better quality of life because you don't have to move somewhere that you uh, don't want. And uh, Kalina has just put the article in the chat as well. Uh, so the link uh, to that news article about Facebook and Twitter going remote is in the chat. Cool. Is being a foreign applicant to remote jobs a disadvantage? As an international student, I feel like it's difficult to get traditional office jobs. Maybe it's different with remote jobs. I think it definitely is different with remote jobs. I think remote jobs, uh, if you look at our Passion IO team, we have, we're a really diverse team. We have uh, a Chinese national, an Indian national, Mexican national. We have a lot of our development team are in Poland. Uh, we have a developer in Russia, Ukraine. I'm in the UK, obviously. And we have um, Spanish, German. Um, so yeah, I think um, when it comes to going for jobs like uh, nationality or where you're living in the world matters a lot, lot less. Um, answer that live. Right, where, oh, where am I going? How is Slack better than Microsoft Teams, Facebook Workplace, or Google? Uh, Kamala. Um, I can only speak from personal. Um, insights here but slack is just it's a ubiquitous tool i've seen in all companies um it's also personal preference as well um so i can't really give you a, a good answer to why it's better i just it's something that i've always used as as a tool um and that's why i've recommended it uh, so i won't know what communities are like on microsoft teams or facebook workplace as well um, but i know uh, if you search for slack communities in um Google, you'll find loads of value add communities with people who are in the same stage as career as you can get advice from. Um, and it also has gifts. I don't know if those have gifts, but gifts seem to be a big thing for a company culture when you're working remote. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Clifton, is there a good alternative to LinkedIn and trying to avoid the Wild West? I mean, yeah, LinkedIn, I think, you know, you've got a lot of, uh, you've just got a lot of rogue accounts on there and you've got a lot of um, really sort of just like crazy stories about um, like HR hires that never happened and stuff. Um, I think the good alternative to LinkedIn is um, finding digital communities. The two I mentioned have active blogs. We work remotely, remote.co. Uh, and again, I'm gonna go back to it. Um, I've become a bit of an evangelist of it during this webinar, but Slack. Um, remind me in the chat what you, you are currently studying again, Clifton, and I can, um, I can sort of um, tell you how active the, the Slack communities are for, for, your, for your chosen field. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there um, which you can get, um, get advice from. Uh, can you please tell me your daily route for remote working? When you're working at home? Oh, uh, routine. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I normally get up at half seven. Uh, I'll have a coffee and watch the news. Uh, eight o'clock, I'll do some personal learning before work. So I am currently very slowly learning how to code. Um, but one of the good things I like about remote working is that uh, I don't have to commute. So that hour, the eight till nine was a commuting time, which I now can, you know, I'm up and ready to go. Um, but I might as well start at nine. And then I've got this hour where I can do uh, my own thing. So whether it's working on my blog or learning to do some coding. Um, and I work because um, I'm a digital marketer, I do a lot of writing. I do I write a lot of like, articles for our website. So in the morning, I tend to do um, a deep work time, so nine till one. Uh, all distractions are off and I'm just typing away. Um, one till two is uh, lunch. And uh, then three till six is normally meetings or sort of less in-depth work. Sorry, pardon me. Um, things that I can dip in and out of, uh, so maybe updated data or data entry, and then that's where the bulk of the meetings happen. Um, good thing about passion is we were allowed to choose our own hours, which can be a bit dangerous the first time you start remote working. There was a few weeks where I, was, I ended up doing 12-8 uh, or 2-10 just because I wanted to have a lie-in, uh, which uh, you need to be a bit disciplined about, but I, I found that... Um, um, it's better to try and stick to a nine to five. Um, but there's so much flexibility. If I need to take a few hours off in the middle of the day, I can catch up later in the week. Um, so I've got errands to run or something. Uh, it's really good for that. Um, but yes, uh, I hope that answers your question. I'm just gonna go over to here. Clifton, you're doing a master's in religion, but work in the development field. Uh, ah, okay, cool. Um, hmm. Will there be a lot of Slack communities for that? Uh, there's none I know off the top of my head, but I'm sure you'll be able to find something. If you search in, um, even if you wanted just the Slack community for um, uh, religious studies or um, philosophy, uh, there'll be Slack communities for that. Um, and yeah, I'd just suggest having a look. Um, Okay, so Natalie, uh, some of the remote working disadvantages I am worried about is a lack of face-to-face -face social experience, stay motivated, quick and efficient communication issues, team building. I can't comment on the family and children because I, I, I don't have any children yet. Um, it is tough. Um, I think as I said at the, end of the, at the end of the call, it isn't for everyone. You do have to jump in and try it. Um, I think what you, the advantage that remote work gives you is that you have more control over your uh, work-life balance as a whole. So you need to, you might not be seeing people in the office face to face, but what you can do is you can then supplement that by seeing friends and family more. Um, and you can be more flexible with your working time to make sure you still get face to face interaction. Um, staying motivated, I think that does come down to personal discipline. I fell off the bike once or twice with it. Um, but it comes back to what I was saying in the webinar about nobody's going to stand over your shoulder and tell you to do stuff, but you are going to be marked on your productivity. So at the end of the week, when I go to my boss and he says, what have you done? I, essentially, you have to do it. There's nowhere to hide. Uh, you know, like working in an office where you can work at 60% behind a desk. Um, 
so that's sort of what keeps you motivated. And again, quick and efficient communication. Um, Slack is good for that. We're always happy to jump on calls as well for quick issues. Um, but it is, um, you know, a potential hurdle for remote workers and everything you've mentioned in that question is, is, is a valid issue, which all you can do is try and overcome it yourself, I suppose. Um, which as I'll, I'll go back to what I said at the start of the answer is it isn't for everyone. Um, so I hope that answers your question. It might not be the answer you were hoping for, but um, that's all I've got. <laughs> uh how do you manage everyone's priorities and work remotely is it hard to keep everyone on track i think that depends on the type of um role you have um passion io where i work now is a very small team um so we are pretty much in charge of our own goals um so the project i'm working on uh, building out our um, content on our website and our um, for our seo and stuff um i'm only beholden to myself um which means it isn't too difficult um, to keep myself on track because I'm the only person accountable for that, that goal. When the teams do start getting bigger, um, you can communicate asynchronously via Slack. Uh, and as I mentioned in the webinar, you have tools like monday.com, Trello and Asana, which are project management tools. So you've got projects broken down into different tasks assigned to different people and you'll move them along this virtual board as, the, as they get done. Um, and then with that just comes regular communication uh, from a project leader. Um, I didn't really mention much about um, prioritising and working remote when it comes to working remotely in, in the webinar because it's not something that I've, I've done that much of at the moment. Um, cool. Uh, so I'm answering two things going on here. Uh, Come on, uh, claim that remote working is not claim that remote working is not sustainable. How do you measure and maintain productivity? Um, it's honest, open feedback, and it is uh, deliverables that you you confirm with management at the start of the week. Um, so again, we don't have a software at Passion that measures our time on on um, on the computer. Um, I think it goes back to what I was saying in the webinar about you uh, you know you're given a lot of autonomy and i think any other person like quite a lot of like uh, maturity in that you're trusted to do what you say you're going to do um so you maintain productivity by agreeing goals at the start of the week or the start of the month and then delivering them whether that's um a, a like a paid ad campaign or a uh X amount of content written a week, or um, for me, it'd be like new users and traffic to our website, uh, or articles ranking on Google. Um, so I suppose for passion anyway, we don't we don't measure productivity because we we trust our employees to um, do do the work they said they're going to do. Um, cool. So I hope that answers your question, Kamala. Okay, we're getting some more coming in as well. I'm just going to take. Any second to have some water. Okay, the, the, the next two are um, a bit more specific to uh, marketing, which is really cool. Uh, Catherine, do you have any good resources, links to learn to code? Uh, yes, um, freecodecamp.org, completely free. Uh, that'll help you out massively. Uh, Code Academy is another good one, but you'll have to pay for it. Um, I definitely suggest starting with Free Code Camp and uh, start with HTML, CSS. They're the basic building blocks of uh, websites. Uh, from there, JavaScript your next big one. Also, look on Udemy because Udemy uh, has got loads of courses by lots of people. Uh, it's like a big uh, e learning marketplace. Um, and they, they're normally, well, they say they're always 150 to 160 pound, but there's always a 90% sale on somewhere in Udemy. So you'll be able to get a JavaScript course for a tenner. Uh, and don't forget, obviously, passion.io. Uh, we build e-learning mobile apps, and I think we've got some coders on our platform, so check us out as well. Uh, um, but yeah, there's quite a lot of resources there. So um, Catherine, if you want them, um, if you email liam at passion.io with the same question, I can send you some links over. Uh, Yumana, 
Uh, can you explain more about what SEO is? I've heard a lot about it. Um, yes, uh, SEO is search engine optimization. So it is a branch of digital marketing that involves creating content uh, and putting it on a website uh, and then getting that content, them articles to rank on Google. So people um, find your site via searching for questions or solutions to their problems. Uh, that's what it is in a very um, brief overview. Uh, it's what I do a lot of at, at my current job. Um, so basically trying to attract people to our website by writing value add content for them. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Kamala. Thank you so much. I'm really happy you had a, uh, a great session. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, amazing. So that's everything answered. Uh, I hope you all had a great session. Uh, as a King's student, you also got system of the learning. Ah, that's clear, yeah. Yes, and as uh, Kalina said in the chat there, uh, as King's students, you also have access to LinkedIn Learning, uh, where there's also coding in C, Python, Java, and programming courses. Amazing. Yeah, please, any further questions, or if you want any advice on remote working, uh, you can drop me a line at liam at passion.io. Uh, more than happy to... Um, answer any follow-up questions and send you resources uh, as you need them. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Um, and I think that is everything. Bye-bye. I -bye. hope you know, the rest of your day all goes great. Cheers. The old, the old Zoom wave. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, I'll close this session then. Bye, everyone. Thanks, thanks a lot.